Guru Nation wanted to make a quick video on AI. I'm a huge fan. I use it on a daily basis. I think it has implications far beyond our industry. I also think there's a lot of hype around it. So I've been reading articles about how this is gonna revolutionize clinical research and every other industry. And let me tell you something. Clinical research is behind, far behind, other industries i don't think that's changing anytime soon other industries are more c uh, conducive to experimentation other industries are more conducive to the adage of let's break things fast or let's have things fail quickly in order to succeed that is startup lingo that's almost startup 101 i actually don't think that philosophy should apply to clinical research there are people's lives at stake. This is not something that we want to experiment with. We do, our entire industry is based upon experimentation. We do plenty of experimenting enough as it is. We do not need to experiment with tools before other industries do. Now, that doesn't mean you don't play around with it. That doesn't mean you don't have uh, exploration. That doesn't mean you don't find some use cases for it. And my site already kind of has so let's just start with what it's been doing f how i've been using it so far outside of like my video stuff which is like the most immediate obvious applications for it like ai transcribes my videos ai makes my videos into shorts ai turns some of the videos into articles ai generates images for me makes captions in the clinic itself there are limited use cases so far for what it can do now I'm excited about a couple of areas, but let's talk about just what we're using it for today with, I gotta preface this with plenty of adult supervision. Number one, it does do a decent job of at least making the framework for your source documents for some of our studies. So it actually does an incredible job of reading protocols, understanding the protocol, and creating source documentation for it. Now, now, is this the actual source that we end up using for the study? No, we use Creo, so we refine the source uh, quite a bit. We go through it with lots of human eyeballs, at least five people, so there's four coordinators, the lead CRC and myself, and if you include our sub-investigator Jaime Valles, maybe even six or seven sets of eyeballs. But to get you over that hump, like the hardest part in doing a lot of tasks is just starting it. So if JetGPT or whatever AI you guys use can reduce that burden, reduce that friction to the point of, hey, let me start this task for you, you at least get you like halfway there, and then you take the you take it the rest, and it actually can take it further. It can go get you like three fourths of the way there fairly quickly. Now you do have to prompt it properly. You do have to run it by attorneys. You do have to run it by like, hey, are we actually allowed to do this? And some attorneys will tell you, well, you can upload the schedule of assessments, or if ChatGPT is in your SOP, which it is not yet, you can actually upload the entire protocol. So like consult with your attorney this is not legal advice but in a hypothetical experimental way if you upload the protocol to the chat gpt and then prompt it properly it will actually make the source for you now i've noticed i had to prompt it several times because it liked to skip the footnotes and as you guys know if you've been in research those footnotes especially on the schedule of assessments those footnotes contain the majority of the information, like some of the most important information is buried in the footnotes. So one of the prompts was now go back and make sure you include all the footnotes and add it to the source as it pertains to uh, being a uh, good clinical research coordinator so that we can be compliant with the protocol. Then it did. Now for, for one of our longer studies, what it did was visits that would be identical to each other. So visit three is identical to visit five, which is identical to visit seven, which is identical to visit nine and so on. Like every other visit at a certain point became identical. What it would do is it would not create the source for all those visits. It would just say, 
visit three and every other visit should include this. So I had to prompt it again and say, yeah, I understand it's a long study. There's a lot of visits, but please actually write out the source for every single visit. So then it did that. Then I had to go in there and this is where once I had a good framework for a source documentation, I went in there and I made sure all the safety stuff was included. So, hey, any AEs of special interest? What are the special instructions that the protocol say about the adverse events of special interest? Then I went into it and I did the same thing for the contraindicated medications. Then I went in there and did the same thing for abnormal lab values. So you can fine tune it very well. It's just not a one and done, hey, upload it give it one prompt and then you get a complete set of source documents. It's multiple revisions, multiple tweaks, multiple prompts until you can send it to human beings who can then look at it like our lead CRC and our QA department and then they'll revise it. But it's doing a fairly good job so far and that's been an immediate use case. I've also been using it to reply to emails. So I have a separate AI that I've uh, embedded my emails into and it's starting to learn how I reply and it's it's doing it fairly well. And again, I have to use it to prompt. It's helping me catch up out of my email. So it's, it's, it's creating like the first 75% of it. And then I go in there and fine tune the emails, but it's saving me a lot of time in that regard. We are a long way a long way from replacing coordinator if ever i don't think that's going to happen but even becoming like a real tool that coordinators can use like on an hourly basis i don't see it anywhere near there so protocol compliance when you're already doing the study like i actually think tools like creo or real time or whatever e-source you're using should have like ai features built in i i think there's a huge potential for that none of them do they have they have trackers they have reminders they have alerts all this stuff that you need to program into it you can do that so there's ways to automate your workflow but for the ai to actually automate the workflow in real time based on what happened in the visit or what is happening in the visit we are i think a long ways away from that we're also a long ways away from EDC? Like, why does EDC actually have to be a thing? Why can't we just enter data once in the source and then the AI enters the data for you in the EDC? So that's obvious another media application that we are not seeing that I think can be a huge thing. I'm actually working with a startup on doing exactly just this. Then there is pre-screening patients. So shout out to another startup I'm working with, Select IQ. AI is already doing a decent job of selecting patients from the EHRs in order to um, see what studies they qualify for. And it involves uploading protocols and training the AI on the protocols. So I do see a lot of potentials and I do see a lot of like actual applications now, but we're at the tip of the iceberg. And I do think there is uh, years, if not decades away from AI being like a tool that coordinators use on an hourly basis and we're not even having a daily use for it if you take out my email there is no daily use case for ai at my site it's really it's creating source i would like to see it help with budget and contract negotiations we're far away from that i would like to see it with help with patient recruitment we're beginning to see it with things like select iq but that's provided that you already have a patient database for it to mine to begin with. I would like for it to run ads for you like we're doing at Patient Ace. We're, I gotta ask Ronick, but I don't think we're using AI yet, but figure out a way for AI to tweak and optimize ads. I think it could already do that. Probably Patient Ace, we're already doing this with Ronick, but then once those patients are, are leads from that app, training it on trials that are appropriate for those particular sites. So essentially putting, bringing together two different silos, your patient database versus leads that click on the ads versus patients in the EHRs versus studies that you already have. Um, linking all these silos, I think that is something that it can do probably in the next few years. 
Um, that's probably something on the horizon sooner. But protocol compliance would be a huge one. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. So for all the buzz and noise that we hear about AI is going to revolutionize and replace CRAs and replace coordinators, I think it's complete nonsense. I think we're extremely far away from that. I'm very bullish on some of the potential that AI can do, but as practical use cases for sites, we are still like a weekly thing at best if you take out my emails, which I think eventually can become a daily thing, maybe in a year or two. And for it to become an hourly thing or like a minute by minute thing where like the AI is actually helping a coordinator on every aspect of his or her life as a coordinator, I think in a decade. And let me know what you think about this, but I just wanted to make something practical because there's too much hype around this stuff. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.